Hello, Professor Woods. So, for this video, we're going to be doing a little bit of analysis, and it'll be including line, color, light, as well as meaning, and the artistic background for these two pieces. So, let's get started. So, this first piece was made by Eves Klein. Um, he was known as a more of an eccentric individual. And he would use his work as a means to question and criticize ideas uh, in terms of art, aesthetics, as well as human experience, especially in regards to what people considered standards of beauty. Um, fun fact, he was known for patenting his famous IKB, A Shade of Blue, titled International Klein Blue, which you can see in this artwork. Uh, for instance, he thought a lot about the concept of artist involvement and he would do things like lay a coat of ikb onto a canvas challenging you know different types of work in terms of like gestural abstract expressionism work um, and he would upset lots of critics but he would continue his use of color in lots of his work like this one this work is known as shroud anthropometry 20 also known as vampire it belonged to a series of different anthropometries, and he stayed very consistent in using the brushstroke of the of the human model as much as possible. So in this series, he would instruct a nude model to cover themselves in shades of blue and roll on the canvas to imprint their bodies. That way there was as little artist involvement as possible, and the brushstroke came from the work itself, in this case, the body. Uh, in the case of Vampire, the model was also spray-painted around the edges of the body with shades of blue, purples, pink. That way, we could create a negative image that would surround the figure. Uh, so the line work is very implied, and you can see the edge making a line around the body. And obviously, the light comes from the subtractive art and the absence of color in one way or another. So after reviewing his philosophy and his methodology, um, especially, you know, just the reason for why he would create art, how he did, um, you can definitely see that he is staying in theme uh, and staying consistent with his own philosophy of challenging normal ideas of beauty, art, aesthetics, and so on and so forth, especially when it comes to the female figure, which at the time and even beforehand was seen as a source of beauty and a standard for what is aesthetically pleasing. Um, so personally, I appreciate this type of artwork because it challenges the norm. So this next piece was created by Willem de Kooning, an artist from the Netherlands, and he is known today as one of the pioneers of abstract expressionism. He used a lot of his training to work, not just as a full-time artist, but as someone who would build on his experience to work as a pioneer in his field. So he would use his knowledge of cubism to build a balance between representational and abstract art. And by that, I mean that he would push past traditional themes of female beauty or the eternal feminine, a lot like uh, Yves Klein, except de Kooning would be more of a predecessor since Klein's work was made in 1960 and de Kooning created the piece that you see here in 1952. So his approach to concept like this was was very involved with a rough, uncomfortable dichotomy between the intense and the mundane. And you can see that in this piece known as Woman One. And it is the depiction of a female figure in a sundress, given, like I said, a rather rough take on a woman, especially in terms of being a sex symbol. So he uses a lot of loose interpretation of middle class elements like the aluminum door over to the right. And he still tries to create a sense of comfort, familiarity, um, while also giving a very vigorous, vibrant look in his paint strokes. Um, even though the artwork looks a little bit impulsive and doesn't look like it's been planned, 
he actually spent about 18 months perfecting the look of it all just so that he could really push towards the idea of a feminine painting that really tips the scales between comical but also terrifying. So in the artwork, you see a lot of, again, rough, vigorous paint strokes. That's a lot of um, very intense line work with bright colors and a very purposeful design just so it could further along the ideas that he was trying to push towards the viewer. Um, in terms of my own thoughts, I think that this is a really interesting, ironic way to look at beauty. Um, and it's very different from the previous piece with Klein, but at the same time, it takes that idea in a totally different way. And I can appreciate how his philosophy really comes through in his work.